There are many ways to fight a battle. Some people use their mind. Some people use their fists. What are you going to do, college boy? Grab some popcorn and get comfortable. Impact is going to the movies. John Singleton talks about his latest film, Higher Learning. I'm not making little chitlin' movies, you know, that's what I say. I'm making, I'm making cinema. You bought the bottle of beer. Actor-director Bill Duke tells us about his mission in Hollywood. It's unfortunate, but we're perceived in a certain way in this industry. We're perceived as black filmmakers, and that's a, something that I relatively wholeheartedly resent. And film veteran Ossie Davis. As for the black man. 20 or 30 years ago, the focus was on how to get in at any level. Plus, you'll get a glimpse at the new movies from independent directors as well as a look at some lost treasures, African Americans in the movie industry. That's the story making an impact. This is Impact with Willis Johnson. Impact with Willis Johnson is brought to you by ProLine Hair Care Products. Travel accommodations for Impact are provided by American Airlines. But I think uh, whether it's intentional or not, all films uh, have a message. They all say something, whether it's a comedy or whether it's a drama, action adventure. There's always a subliminal or underlying message, and I think uh, we have, as filmmakers, an incredible responsibility to make sure that those messages are things that speak of, of a way of living that um, enables us to become part of the solution rather than part of the problem. America, land of the free and home of the largest movie industry on the planet. Hollywood goes a long way in projecting images that we see in our everyday lives. In fact, it's a mirror of our society. But what are African Americans seeing in that mirror? Well, on this edition of Impact, we'll talk with African Americans who are responsible for what we see on the big screen. Sit back and relive some of the forgotten pages of a remarkable chapter in black entertainment. It's a story that begs to be told. I want to talk about the filmmaking industry, uh, and I want to look at it from your eyes. How you see the filmmaking industry for African Americans today, um, as opposed to, or in comparison to, say, 20, 30 years ago for African Americans? 20, 30 years ago, the focus was on how to get in at any level, uh, as performers, as, uh, and certainly as uh, writers, directors, and uh, whatever slot we could get in the craft unions. Uh, it was a time when, you know, we had petitions and, and demonstrations and hearings. And action! Hey, how is it going there, men? What's going on, man? <laughs> well, you know I smell that barbecue. You know. uh, young black uh, filmmakers, you know, uh, are not doing too bad at the moment. And we also have begun to poke holes in the production barriers. You have black producers who come along and do film. The casual observer might think that African Americans began making films back in the 70s during the so-called black exploitation period. But black filmmakers have been behind the cameras a long time. The legendary Oscar Micheaux's films can be traced back to the early 20s. In fact, proof of a strong African American presence in early filmmaking can be found in this vault. The Southwest Film Archives located at Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Well, we call it really the uh, Tyler Black Film Collection. Tyler, uh, why they call it Tyler? Because we found it in Tyler, Texas in 1983. And the collection is actually comprised of 33 features and shorts that primarily were produced and directed by African American independent writer, producer, directors during the 30s, 40s, and the 50s. 
And this is, this is a pretty incredible collection of films because a lot of people don't even know that these directors were even working and making films in those days. Pardon, miss, but a friend of yours sent me to see you. Oh, indeed. What friend? A lady friend across the street. A lady friend of mine? The late Dr. William Jones, which is the founder of the archives, um, one morning he received a call from one of the warehouse in Tyler, Texas. And uh, they told him on the phone that we have an old film cans here and nobody want it. Would you like to come down or just if you have any interest to look at them? And he said, sure, I will. So the, a week later, he drove down to Tyler, Texas, and he found uh, the treasure of the African-American film. And background. Power and clout in filmmaking centers around several concepts, finance, talent, and distribution. The most important of these Problem is distribution. Financial and not Even if you raise the money to make a movie, if you can't get the film distributed so people can see it, then you might as well not have made it at all. Distribution is a very, very important aspect of this business. And it's one where we're not very well represented at all. How lucrative is it? Very lucrative. That's where the money is in distribution. Even today, movies by black filmmakers and others run up against the distribution wall, especially if the movies tell stories outside of the mainstream. So some filmmakers distribute their own works city by city. Sankofa is an excellent example of self-distribution. Ain't she a saint? very difficult for independent filmmakers who do work outside the Hollywood system and do films that are not, that do not fit into the typical Hollywood formula to get their films distributed. And uh, what we did um, is decided to try some alternative strategies in reaching the black community to make them aware of this film. We contacted community-based organizations, major black institutions in each city and interested people who heard, heard about the film and wanted to support the film. When we started out, we had one print, one print and lots of debt. From that 11-week run in Washington, D.C., we put that money back into opening a distribution operation and striking our inner negative so we can get multiple prints. And every dime that we get in, a, in the theater in the city makes it possible for us to open it in another city. So we reinvest every dollar that people use to buy a ticket. And so really, Sankofa's distribution has been financed by ordinary black people. But what about more established filmmakers? John Singleton and Bill Duke have quite a lot to say when Impact returns. All right, all right. Let's break it up. Still to come on Impact with Willis Johnson. When I'm writing the script and I'm directing it, you know, I know that this is gonna be the scene where everybody's gonna shout at the screen and talk to the movie and everything. Your wedding date is a year away, but it seems like that day is getting closer fast. For only $39.95, you can order your copy of So You're Planning a Wedding. This how-to video and instructional workbook was designed by a renowned wedding planner with over 20 years of experience. So You're Planning a Wedding will show you how to be in control of the planning process while saving you time, energy, and money. Act now and call our operator at 1-800-268-8810, Department M. Mom? Yes, dear? Mama, I want soft and beautiful hair just like yours. Sweetheart, I've got something even better. And it's made just for you. Just for me? Just for me is the only no-lie conditioning cream relaxer made especially for your daughter's hair. The exclusive gentle relaxing formula makes your daughter's hair more soft and manageable than ever. And it's just for me. Just for me. Created and powered by mothers. Especially for their daughters. By Proline.
This is New York City. It has a lot of things that filmmakers are looking for. Recognizable buildings and landmarks, lots of people, and a bigger-than-life feeling. In 1985, a young New York filmmaker burst into the scene with a movie called She's Gotta Have It, and it took African-American moviegoers by storm. In fact, that film by Spike Lee may be his most important. That's because many industry observers say it started the latest wave of black cinema that is still going strong. You can't ask me first. I asked you. Uh, he also began to make a lot of noise. He began to do uh, both with his films and in his public advocacy what we used to do back 20 or 30 years ago. He was, he, Spike was his own demonstration. Spike was his own hearing. You know, Spike was his own attack. Spike was the guy who was outside throwing the brick <laughs> at the institution. And at the same time, Spike was the man who, when the door opened, took his wheelbarrow, went in and said, fill it up. <laughs> and they did. So Spike uh, certainly uh, encouraged Hollywood to take another look at the black audience and at the black talent and uh, to begin to provide some opportunities. One of the filmmakers riding the wave Lee started is John Singleton. The young director's third feature film is Higher Learning. John Singleton talks about his movie a little later. Another director riding the Lee wave is Bill Duke. The actor turned director is on a mission in Hollywood. We spoke with Duke in his Los Angeles area home. What does directing give you uh, in terms of a rush that, that acting doesn't? My rush is really from, from, from uh, acting is a very different immediate kind of response. It's like here, tactile, um, immediate one thing uh, with the, myself and the camera. As a director, it's a totally different experience. It's almost like you know what God must have felt like when he took this little piece of clay and this piece of clay over here, you know, and he kind of smashed it together and out we came. But I've decided I'm going to dog you no matter what. Okay? I'm gonna Sister Act you. 2. Okay. I know. Major, major film. A lot of money. And you were behind it. Yes. What got you there and what made it successful? I, uh, I was, uh, I had a contract with Disney to do two films there. Uh, the first one was called The Cemetery Club, oh which was, was about uh, a, the unionization of uh, maybe um, of three, um, three uh, Jewish women, and their husbands had died, and they had the cemetery club to go to, to their grave sites and visit their husbands. And that film was, I did that, that was my first film there, and then the second film was Sister Act 2, which was part of the same contract. It's a film I believed in. Uh, it, it, it addressed the, um, in a very, I think, hom homogenized way, but still, I think, poignant way, the needs of young people. Um, it was something that I think is appealing because of the music and, of course, Whoopi Goldberg and the surrounding cast of, that was in Sister Act One. Mm -hmm. um, it's a film I'm proud of, actually. It's unfortunate but we're perceived in a certain way in this industry. We're perceived as black filmmakers. And that's a, something that I relatively wholeheartedly resent. I mean, I've never heard Woody, Woody Allen referred to as a Jewish filmmaker, or mm -hmm. Francis Ford Coppola referred to as a very good Italian filmmaker. Uh, they're good filmmakers. And so it's a way of saying we're a little less. And so to a, a large extent, we're treated in that way, and so in terms of distribution and financing, you're limited to a certain extent in terms of the kinds of things that will be financed, and many of them reflect a portion of our community that is not uh, attractive. Where would you like to see the filmmaking industry go, in particular for, for African Americans, for black people? Now, we say we want all these black family-oriented films. When they come out, we don't go see them. Yeah. We go see the action films and the... Uh, you know, so we're as acculturated as everyone else. But if you ask me where I'd like to see it go, my belief is, is that the future and the opportunities for minorities is not in the film business. It's in the, um, it's in the multimedia business. It's, in, it's in the, on the information superhighway. Mm. 
where true distribution and exhibition and ownership of copyright, trademark, and licensing are all available. It's very new now, and we are behind in terms of developing our skills and understanding of that new market, but it's the information superhighway that's going to offer us the opportunities. Leo, thanks a bunch. My pleasure, thank you. Remember when life insurance was something simple you bought to help pay your final expenses? Back when benefits never went down and premiums never went up, and you could buy just a few thousand dollars of coverage for only a few dollars a month. Well, solid, affordable life insurance is not a thing of the past. I'm Ed McMahon, here to tell you you can still get cash value life insurance, old-fashioned security designed to last a lifetime for just $6.95 a unit per month. No, you don't have to buy $50,000 or $100,000 or more of coverage. You don't have to pay a lot of money either. This easy-to-budget life insurance will never go up in cost, and your benefit will never go down simply because of your age. Best of all, because of a two-year limited benefit period, you cannot be turned down. If you're age 50 or over, your acceptance is guaranteed. There's no medical exam, not even one health question. That's not just a promise. It's a guarantee in writing from Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. This information and guarantee of acceptance will be mailed to you without cost or obligation when you call this toll-free number. That's all it takes to start providing help for your final expenses. So next time someone says you can't get affordable life insurance anymore, tell them to call this number. Better yet, pick up the phone and call toll-free for your free information package today. Here's how. Call 1-800-422-6161 for free information about this valuable life insurance. That's 1-800-422-6161. You'll receive this handy guide to Social Security absolutely free. Call 1-800-422-6161 for your free gift and information. Call today. There is no risk or obligation. Remember, the call is free, and so is the information. That's 1-800-422-6161. Operators are available 24 hours a day. That's 1-800-422-6161. Hi, this is Willis Johnson for Impact in Los Angeles at the premier opening of Higher Learning, John Singleton's new movie, as we continue to take a look at the filmmaking industry for African Americans. If it's nighttime, the stars must be out. Eddie? When you read the script for this particular role, what was it that said, I want to do this? Fudge was me. The character of Fudge was, 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 was who I am. You know, and uh, the views that, that Fudge has is, is, I agree with, you know, 100%, you know, so it was me, and I had to do it. I'm here in support of Tyra Banks, and it's her, it's her first role as an actress uh, in a movie, so I'm, I'm sort of here in support of that, and also I'm a fan of John Singleton, so, you know, I'm really interested to see what he's, what he's up to. Spike Lee and John Singleton are trying to make films with some substantial content, and... I think that's progress. And I think that they have a vision, and I think that for the first time since maybe Oscar Michaud, some young black filmmakers are, are able to fulfill the vision, their own vision of the films they want to make. And that's extraordinary. That is progress. So what is Singleton's motivation behind higher learning in particular, and in film making in general? We found out when we interviewed him in the offices of his New Deal Productions. John, first of all, thanks for being on Impact. Really appreciate the opportunity and the time. I uh, saw the movie, Higher Learning. What were you trying to do with Higher Learning? Um, I was basically trying to give people a, a look at uh, contemporary America and uh, where we are right now and uh, where we appear to be going. 
John, this movie had a lot of stories in it, different kinds of stories, different lifestyles, love story, all kinds of twists. What were you trying to accomplish with that? Well, this film is a is, is a lot of different films. Uh, it's a it's not um it's it's still you know very made much from an, an Afrocentric perspective because I'm a black man and I'm the one writing, directing, and producing it. So, um, but you know for the fact that there are different types of characters in it, um, you know, you know makes it uh you know you know more than what people will perceive just a black movie. You know I wouldn't even call my, my other two movies just black movies. You know even though they are are just black characters. <clears throat> They're great works of cinema because <clears throat> they tell stories about, you know, people in a human human sense. You see? Yeah. So everybody, you know, comes to understand them and, and feels for the characters, you know. You know, black people, everybody, you know, because the story is well told. In a conversation that I had with Bill Duke, uh, he mentioned that there are parameters that black filmmakers have. Uh, do you feel that you're pigeonholed? No. At all? I don't think I am. Um, I think I'm in a <clears throat> kind of unique situation where my um, my films show through, you know, like, you know, all that, you know, like, this, it ain't like, I'm not making little chitlin movies, you know, that's what I say. I'm making, I'm making cinema, you know. I'm making movies that, you know, that, that are not only great work of uh, art, but, you know, but, you know, money-making films, too. What's next for John Singleton? Uh, more movies, bigger and better movies. Uh, that's it. Specifically, what kind? No, of I don't like. I don't like telling, saying what I'm gonna do. You know, everybody is all about. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I just like to do it, and then you find out, and it's done. You know, I pride myself on being a man of action and not of words. Impact with Willis Johnson is brought to you by ProLine Hair Care Products. Travel accommodations for Impact are provided by American Airlines. Coming up on the next Impact, we'll take a behind the scenes look at Me and the Boys with Steve Harvey. Hold on one second, I just wanted to let you know, I don't need two people right here. I don't, I don't need people right here. Steve is really funny, you know, so we just have a good time most of the time. This chair, this Steve Harvey, how? I own this, this mine. All this mine. You can write that down. You learned that right here on Impact. This is the one show you can tune in and learn something. Impact. Tune in. Here are some clips from movies in the Southwest Film Archive collection at SMU. And you know, baby, a beautiful girl like you ain't got no business going to seeds in a town like this. The news, the news, Paris coming. The news, Paris coming. The news, Paris coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My wedding present to you, dear will be a new home far removed from the catbird nest. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this edition of Impact. My thanks to Bill Duke, John Singleton, and Ossie Davis, who are making an impact on the filmmaking industry. And remember, always live your life to make an impact. Clothing for Willis Johnson provided by Silhouette. Images of men. The fact that, it, that Hollywood concentrates a great deal on violence and mindlessness and nihilism and disbelief and sex and all of that proves on the surface that these are the things that sell. But in a more devastating, deep sense of the word, it proves that Hollywood hasn't got the talent or the genius to do what the art can do. That's what it, it, it's a lack of.
of moral and cultural and artistic capacity and authority. That's why we are overcrowded with all of this nonsense and crap. Sure, it makes a, a, a million bucks, and that gives it a kind of validation. But brother, if you make the million bucks selling junk and crap, you're going to make two, three, and four million when you come and sell the real food. The, the times are waiting for the people who have the courage and the gumption and the capacity and the talent and the genius to do it. That's all we need now.